I've already had to start this one twice because I keep talking bullshit. So let's give it another go. So this week's um, chat is about a lady called Edith Lanchester, who was born in 1871. Um, this is Edith. She was commonly known as Biddy, so that's what I will call her for this dur for the duration of this. So she was the fifth child of um, a wealthy architect and his wife. Um, she was brought up in Hove. She attended teacher training college in Fitzrovia, the Maria Gray College, which I think was the first teacher training college for women. She took up a post of a clerk secretary uh, in the city of London in the early 1890s. Uh, by 1895, Biddy was a confirmed socialist and a member of the Social Democratic Federation, um, which was Britain's first formally organised socialist um, political party. So Edith was never going to fit very well with her parents' sort of bourgeois background. Um, she took this rebellion a bit of a step further to their shock when she announced she'd fallen in love with a working class Irishman, a fellow socialist, by the name of Seamus um, James Sullivan and was intending to live with him. And the, the, the issue here was that Biddy had no intention of marrying Seamus. So they, Biddy and Seamus described this as a free love union, which they planned to begin in October 1895. So you can see how progressive Biddy was for her time. This is Seamus, dapper chap with his tash. Um, it's the best photo I could find of him, unfortunately. So Edith's father was furious about this and he described it as outright immorality. Um, he went as far as to hire a mental health specialist by the name of George Blandford. Um, sorry, this is the point at which I would normally show you my coffee mug, but actually I've got as far as gin already. Black gin, ghost gin, go buy some. Mm. It is tea time. Um, so, so her father and George Blandford, along with three of her brothers, turned up at Biddy's lodgings the night before she was due to start her non-marriage. Um, Biddy wouldn't give in. They tried to talk her out of it and she wouldn't give in. So her father handcuffed her. He later justified this by saying he thought her actions were an act of social suicide. He'd planned ahead, though, so he obviously knew that her response wasn't going to be what he was after because he'd already applied for what was then called an urgency audit. The equivalent now would be what, it's probably not the correct technical term, but what most of us would call being sectioned. Um, so Blandford declared Biddy insane on the brilliantly tenuous grounds of over-education. Um, and she was carted off, literally, in a horse and carriage, to the Priory Hospital, which already existed. Um, it was then a psychiatric asylum, and obviously now it's a famous um, addictions and mental health clinic, and whatever. Um, there is a report, if I can find it, from the South London Press on Saturday the 2nd of November 1895. It may be stated here that Dr Blandford, who signed the certificate for Miss Lanchester's removal and her father, have both declared that they acted on the bona fide belief that Miss Lanchester's studies and surroundings had, had unhinged her mind. Um, so that's what people thought of educated women in those days. Um, Biddy tried to escape, she smashed, smashed the windows of the carriage on the way. Um, and because of who she was, it, it, the case gained public notoriety anyway, because she had friends within the Socialist Party and it had ended up in the news because of her father and the way it had happened. Even the Marquess of Queensbury, who would later, you know, was, was gosh, I've lost my date, it's around the same time, took um, Oscar Wilde to court and ended up being the end of him as well, you know, wrote an open letter to James Sullivan in the Standard. And I've got a quote for that as well which just goes to show some double standards in hypocrisy. Um, Were I in your position, I should go through with the ceremony of marriage and the instant it was concluded, protest against and repudiate it, saying it was naught to you. You have a chance now of making a public protest as everyone's attention is attracted. What is their idiotic ceremony? But it gives your wife and future children protection and by making a public protest, you and your wife clear your own consciousness, consciences and are free before God and man. Um, so 
even Queensbury thought that Seamus and Biddy should just go through with the marriage for the sake of propriety, even if they didn't believe it. Um, and people had this much investment in other people's social standing at that point. Um, luckily for Biddy, her landlady, having witnessed her lodger being taken away in handcuffs and, you know, in some manner of drama, in, it was also a member of the, um, a prominent member of the da Socialist Party. Uh, she got involved, as did the MP for Battersea. Uh, and four days into Biddy's um, incarceration at the Priory, which, as I said then, was a mental health asylum, was an asylum. I'm not talking very well today, and that's just because I'm really stressed about everything. I'm not drunk. This is the first gin of the day. I probably need more. Um, but Biddy was released. Mm, Having been interviewed by the commission, Commissioners of Lunacy, I'm reading this because it's such a brilliant quote, and found perfectly sane but foolish. Uh, so, which always makes me laugh. So after leaving the Priory, Biddy never saw her father again, not while he was alive. Um, she went straight off and set up home with Seamus and clearly didn't change political views because by 1897 she was personal secretary to Eleanor Marx, the youngest daughter of Carl. Um, the ongoing interest in this family is that Biddy and Seamus went on to have two children, both of whom clearly shared their parents' individuality. Waldo went on to become a renowned puppeteer once declared the greatest in Britain. And this is their daughter, who most people will recognise. This is Elsa Lanchester, the bride of Frankenstein, um, the daughter of one of the coolest couples of the 1800s. Um, Edith and James, Biddy and James, happily cohabited without ever getting married until he died in 1945. Biddy lived in Brighton until 1966, and up until the point at which she wasn't capable of walking herself to the bus stop, was still going to political meetings and making her opinions very known in, in you know, to anyone they will listen. So, yeah, so there, there's Biddy Lanchester, who is one of the coolest women I would ever have loved to have met. Um, people are scared of intelligence, and that's your um, secret weapon in an awful lot of cases. So I can't not plug things. All these videos have been from... This book, which anyone who knows me knows all about already, should have been out on the 30th of April, is now out theoretically on the 30th of May, lockdown notwithstanding, and Laurie's been able to get into warehouses and stuff like that. There'll be a link on the description. This will now be on YouTube because I've got that far. I'm not very efficient at it, but, you know, apparently you can like and subscribe it if you want to. Um, yeah, and that's it. So... As, you know, as always, let me know if there's anyone you particularly want to do. I'm going to do Byron at some point, but I'm putting him off because I'm starting to like him. And everyone knows I didn't like him, so I'm a bit thrown by that. Um, but if there's anyone else you'd particularly like, give me a shout. Cheers.